Our uh, next guest has performed at clubs all over Canada and the United States, including the Improv in Los Angeles and also Catch a Rising Star and Stand Up New York here in Manhattan. And now, making his network television debut, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, Norm MacDonald. Norm, are you... Well, thanks. Good to be here. Uh, uh, I've been traveling around a lot, watching a lot of the TV, you know, and uh, you seen these new sports on the TV where they'll try to combine two sports together and make up a new sport. You know, like a guy will run a hundred yard dash and then fish. <laughs> so I love the TV. You know, I saw a cat food commercial and I said at the end of it, I said, all natural food for your cat. All natural food. But cat food's made out of horse meat. Yeah, that's the way it works in nature. The, the cat right above the horse in the food chain. <laughs> Matter of fact, every time my kitty gets a little cooped up in the apartment, I, I need to take him down to a racetrack, let him stalk some prey down there. It's so cute when he comes trotting back with a stallion hanging out of his mouth there, you know. But I love the TV, you know, anything at all. The only thing I don't like, you ever see it when there's a celebrity that you really respect and admire? And then he shows up on some cheap TV show, you know? Last week, I was watching the, the Hollywood Squares and a secret square, J.D. Salinger. <laughs> well, I like game shows. That's my favorite thing, you know? Big prizes and everything. You ever see the dating game? You ever see that show? That's a weird show there. The prize on that show, another contestant. <laughs> Talk about cheap. And they always do the same thing in that show. They get a beautiful girl, match her up with three giant dorks. <laughs> Last week, they had a guy on. It was a crazy guy. Looney bin, psycho, wingnut. You, know, you can tell by the way they introduce him. They go, bachelor number two is a shadowy lurking character <laughs> whose hobbies include skulking. Please welcome from no fixed address. He's just a guy. Menacing figure shambles into the studio there, you know, and... Then they make the girl ask those questions, you know, laced with sexual innuendo. You know, girl go, bachelor number two, if I were a popsicle, <laughs> what would you do to me then if I were a popsicle? That's what it says in the card here. And the guy goes, well, if you're a popsicle, huh? Well, first of all, I guess I'd uh, take your wrapper off. <laughs> if you know what I mean. And then I'd grab a hold of your sticks. If you know what I mean. And then I'd press you against the counter till you're broken too. <laughs> so happy in the freezer till later. <laughs> you know what I mean, Abby? You understand what I'm getting at? It's crazy. But uh, a lot of violence on TV. You know, kids aren't supposed to watch violence now on the TV. They're afraid maybe the kids will copy what they see on the screen, you know? I can't even get a funny cartoon anymore because some 12-year-old watched a particularly violent episode of the Roadrunner Coyote Show, and the next day they found him in the bottom of a canyon <laughs> with two giant springs strapped to his feet. A big, a big couple of springs. He had a little umbrella in his hand. Sign said, yikes. <laughs> But there's violence everywhere. You know, I was reading a paper, this guy, if you can believe this, a guy killed his family because the devil told him to. Can you believe that? Imagine that, killing your family, and then you go back to the devil, you go, yes, devil, I did as you instructed. I killed my family, and I chopped them up and put them in a duffel bag. Here they are. I'll be burying them tonight at the shallow grave by the side of the railroad track, as you have commanded, O oh, Lord, host of the hoary netherworld. <laughs> then the devil pulls off a mask, it's me, Bob! <laughs> You got me, Bob. You got me there. I... I got my family in a duffel bag over here. That's one for you there, Bob. This dirty dog. So I had this dream today. You ever have a dream and then you wake up 
right in the middle of a great dream, and then you're back in your stinking life again. <laughs> and so then you try to fall asleep, re-dream it. Man, that never works. Always end up with some weird mutation of your original dream there, you know? Like in the first dream, I was in a pool with Christy Brinkley, and we were swimming toward each other, and then I woke up, so I fell asleep again, and I end up shooting pool with David Brinkley. 